Welcome to The Secret Witch Show, the podcast providing a safe and alchemical altar space of conversations which help powerful women escape a half-hearted, spiritless society and rediscover the freedom of living a wildly magical life. Every week we explore how to cast aside the wounds of shame, guilt and fear connected with fully being yourself so you can grant yourself permission to stop hiding, ground soulfully back into your body, illuminate your whole soul desires, tend your soul, rediscover and reclaim your powerful gifts, express your magic and manifest your wildest alchemy. There's no better place to become who your heart longs to be. This is where we will guide you into liberation. I'm your host, Nicole Barton, and I'm so excited to dive in. Hello, my loves, the warmest of welcomes to the show. In today's spiritless world, incredible women are unconsciously selling their souls to mundane lives in order to gain love, approval and safety instead of allowing themselves to liberate and radiate their powerful magic. So I've created a potent portal of transformation for those who are ready to walk the path of living their wild alchemy, a journey from the mundane to the magical. I have a few spaces to work one-to-one with me where you'll learn to open your heart, connect to your body, tend your wounds, rediscover your soul's gifts, reclaim your radiance, invoke your power and liberate your full majesty to claim a magical life on your terms. You can find out more by contacting me over at www.nicolebarton.co.uk. In today's episode, I am thrilled to be freestyling on the controversial topic of how and why your soul is secretly longing for death, disruption and descent. Now, it's not your average thought that you're longing for death, but it's something I came to see was really so important along the journey to liberating a secret witch, and that's why I wanted to share this episode with you early on. In this episode, I help you understand how you're longing to be shaken up to create new ways of being, why the commonly trodden ascension path isn't really the way to freedom, as well as why death, disruption and descent are where the magic is, and why this is only possible within our bodies. Let's dive in. Mmm, well, 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 what a topic. (laughs) So we are today talking about how and why your soul is secretly longing for death, disruption and descent. And uh, I have to say, just before I dive into that, because it's going to be really juicy, I am making this into a little bit of a personal ritual, this recording, so I'm quite enjoying myself, I have to say. I've got um, a beautiful hot cacao. Uh, and I've just this moment received my new crystal ball which is absolutely stunning so I am just going to post a picture of that over on social media later so if you do want to have a little look at that it's absolutely stunning um <laughs> then head on over to my uh, to my social media and I'll be posting that I know this is uh, going to be a bit delayed in its release because we we're pre-recording but yeah just wanted to share it with you because it's just so beautiful and uh, um, and actually, it's pretty dark, so it fits with <laughs> with the topic of death, disruption, and descent. So, why not? Hey, but yeah. So I have got my hot cacao, and I'm ready. This is my making it into a little ritual. So this episode, then, um, there is so much juicy richness in this episode, and it's a really important one for you as a secret witch to be able to welcome, liberate, and alchemize your darkness. So. This is a really important uh, episode um, because so often in this world, especially even in the worlds of self-help and spiritual expansion, we're taught to focus a lot on positivity and on finding our light and kind of what I'm going to describe to you is the path of ascension, I guess. Um, and I've always shared about how kind of forced positivity just doesn't feel right to me. Um, but I've started to see its place in the spiritual world as well. And really, the, the whole point of this episode is to explore why that is really somewhat redundant if we don't actually alchemize our darkness um, and create death to old ways of being and then descend fully into our bodies. So those are 
things that really have stood out to me as this part of my journey deepens. So this is what I'm here to share because all of my work now is based around this. So although obviously descending into our darkness sounds scary, it is actually something that your soul is longing for in order to kind of be free to be in its in its power um so that's why i called this episode why your soul is secretly longing for death disruption and descent because actually until you've welcomed all parts of you which i touched on in the first episode of this um podcast really uh, but until you've welcomed all parts of you it's actually not possible to live a soulful life of magic because if we only focus on the light then pieces of us get lost, hidden and shamed into the darkness. So in this episode, we're going to dive into my own journey with what I now like to call uh, the ascension path and the dissension path of spirit and soul, along with why the best path is one which alchemizes your darkness into gold and creates death to old ways of being in order to fully liberate your gold. Which, by the way, isn't the ascension path. So I'll explain more about that in a moment. And I did actually write um, a little bit of an article on this uh, the other the other week. So that is also on my blog if you're interested in checking that out. Um, but firstly, I just wanted to share um, the importance of the dissension path and help you know what it really is even <laughs> because it kind of just sounds like some fancy words at the moment um, but really the dissension path is all about death and disruption of old ways of being and it's about really coming to live as your soul's gift so the first thing to know is that death and disruption are compulsory for living this path of soul and creating a life of magic and that likely means that it's not an easy path um, so the very reason that often when we're called to this path, we feel like we need courage for it is exactly that. We do. <laughs> and um, and often the ascension path almost teaches us that, you know, we, we, we're light and everything's fine and, and we don't need to worry about anything. And in some ways that's transcending it. So, so really, if you're being called to this soulful path, there's no transcending or evading the fact that actually it probably does feel scary. Um, but equally, the costs of not walking the path of your magic are so huge in comparison to the price you pay for liberating yourself. And I can promise you that because I've walked that path myself. So I just wanted to start actually by sharing a quote that was described by Bill Plotkin in his book Soulcraft and his book really is um, really excellent to read if you are kind of wanting to know a bit more about the path of soul but I just wanted to share his quote here to get a sense really of why death and disruption are so important and why this path of descent is the, is the way to that. So Bill Plotkin says, nobody ever talks about this part. You know, the part where you're no longer a caterpillar, not yet a butterfly. You don't know who you are and you don't know where you're going. All you know is that every fibre of your being is calling for transformation, for disruption, for a revolution of the spirit. So surrender, break down. This is not the death of you. This is the dying of who you once were. This is your rebirth, darling. Mm, and I love that because that really answers the question why we're longing for death and disruption. And it's, it's the key to it really is so that we can truly transform. And that's why it's the secret gateway to soul because obviously if we're not already living a soulful life, there's going to be a lot of stuff that has to die and has to be disrupted in order for us to be able to create that for ourselves. So as a secret witch, I'm going to guess that you're listening to this knowing exactly what I mean about longing for something to change. You probably don't want to be selling your soul anymore, living a mundane life. Um, you don't want to be lacking confidence in yourself anymore. You don't want to feel trapped and you don't want to not trust yourself. So these are all things that need to die in order for the real you to be rebirthed. Because <laughs> you want to be fully in your power, creating a life of magic, whatever that magic looks like for you. And you want to be living a soul-led life. 
and filling your days with alchemy and love and freedom rather than the probably quite well known shame, mistrust and fear. And that is so possible for you that it's not even worth debating. But it will need to involve death to old ways of being, disruption of who you are and invocation of new ways of being until you're fully in your majesty. So death and destruction, again, key to this path, but totally worthwhile. Now, where you're journeying from, you may and you may not have, and it's not compulsory, uh, but you may well have already been embedded into an understanding that actually life should be easy. Um, As long as we trust the universe, trust spirit, trust God, trust the divine, uh, trust love, whatever it is that is your label for all of that stuff that we point to. Um, Because this is much of the teaching of the spiritual path and the spiritual path really is pointing towards us finding our true nature. And like I say, that isn't compulsory to walking this path, but it is something that often people have explored before they get to the path of soul. And so that is what I'm referring to really, as I talk about the path of ascension, the path of kind of transcending and moving upwards uh, towards the light. And that's really the stuff that we're taught in the spiritual world about kind of ascending and transcending the body and the ego. For example, an example of this is one of, um, say, for example, a a leader like Muji, who talks about um, once you know you are not flesh and blood, that you are an eternal spirit, then nothing will trouble you. Even death you will not know. It is just a change of state. So really, that sums up, you know, we're taught that we're not the flesh and blood that we live in. And that whatever goes on in our minds and bodies really isn't relevant. And we can and should transcend it or move beyond it in order to find peace. So this is a big part of what I would call a spiritual teaching or the ascension path. And don't get me wrong, there's a really useful element to that. And and my path myself has um, been, a big part of it has been um, something called the three principles, which gave me so many profound realisations that we're... Basically, what I took from it was that we're lived by a natural intelligence, whatever label, like I say, you want to use for that love, wisdom, divinity, spirit, intuition. Let's just call it uh, the realisation of an ascension path. So a knowing that we're held, a knowing that we're part of an intelligence we can't ever really come to understand. I think um, it's been talked about in my summit as kind of like there's 97% of what we don't know. And we're just like this small 3%. Have I got that math right? (laughs) It's not hard, is it? But <laughs> um, but yeah, the, we're just such a small percentage of what like of what we know, and so there's this kind of great mystery, which I know many of my guests so far have also referred to. But there's this Id- idea that there's a greater plan, a path kind of towards the light, and I walked that as well. And for so long, it was so helpful, and in fact, it is really useful to know about the ascension path because it really helps us lean into trusting the natural intelligence of life it helps us see quite how supported we are so at the point in my journey of learning to lean into trust the ascension path was huge and it really did help me to love and accept parts of myself that I'd never allowed and particularly to relax and not take things so seriously but that's only kind of part of the journey I've come to see and it is so tempting to fully lean into the path of ascension because it does seem like an easy path we all think that we want the easy path but actually what I came to see was it's not actually that easy it is something that ends up kind of suppressing more and more who we really are so I'm going to talk about that in a in a little while but actually my experience of walking the path of ascension is that much of who we are gets lost suppressed and pushed into the darkness never to be seen again and kind of repressed and ignored so I have been in some of the most powerful work of my life recently. I've talked about this in the first um, episode that I did. And it's really been the work of reclaiming parts of me that I had pushed into the darkness. And that uncovering has really shed much light and much darkness (laughs) onto my work and how I support others in liberating themselves. And really what was hilarious um, about what led me to this knowing about the importance of death in my work 
both in my work with others and in my own life was that I was communing with spirit. I, I commune with spirit and I invite in symbols and, and things for, to guide me. Uh, and one night I was lying in bed happily and the Grim Reaper came to visit me, which is not really what you want to see. I've talked about this again in the first episode, I think. Um, but I was a little bit uh, perturbed by this dark vision at night, <laughs> which is an understatement. And kind of being heavily entrenched in the ascension path, it was quite a shock, really, I guess. And so it kind of led me into seeing the importance of dream work because also the witch had come to me and various other kind of dreams and things like that whilst I was in my dream state had kind of come to me, um, with all with messages about informing my work. Um, but I really began to see that there's this kind of message from soul about the importance of death and destruction in the work that I do. So I'd kind of before that been all love and light and the good girl and helping people ascend. And um, it's really funny, actually, because at the moment I am um, updating my website because all of the photos <laughs> in my website, you'll notice probably, just doesn't fit in with the witchy vibe because... Until then, I was kind of in the white flowy dresses and, and just all this love and light. And actually, there was such a fundamental, I look at that now and I see there's such a fundamental element missing about embracing our darkness. And it was just another way of smoothing over all of the stuff that I didn't really want to look at. So this was kind of a, another breadcrumb along my path, inviting me into soul. And I realised, obviously, with all of these visions and things, that actually it was time to begin to look courageously into the darkness and liberate all of all of what there was there to be loved um, into freedom. So, out of this work, all of my um, new programmes have been birthed. This very show, this very um, Secret Witch show, has been birthed uh, from that. And, yeah, it's all about liberating our darkness because... It is the journey of dissension to soul, back into our bodies um, and all of that stuff that has had me create a magical life. Um, a magical life, I have to say, that actually whilst I was in the ascension path, I was still sort of looking for, but but kind of bypassing as if it didn't really matter. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that really and share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way that can also offer you your next breadcrumb. So, again, as I said, I've often shared about the three principles and I've talked also quite a lot about dancing and being human. And that is something, as particularly as I was moving into the end of my uh, self-rediscovery summit last year, um, I was very much talking about because I really did start to begin to see how important our humanness was. And this really has had me lean deeper and deeper into this dissension. And this dissension is really a path which fully embraces all of our humanness rather than suppresses or uh, ascends it. Because in my experience, kind of this universal wisdom only takes you part of that journey. So trust, again, as I said, only takes you so far. And what is often unconsciously so it's not purposefully again um, but it's unconsciously misinterpreted within the ascension path within the three principles within the other spiritual paths that I've kind of trodden uh, because I also studied yoga for a long long time so yogic philosophy um, all of that sort of stuff which very much often has this ascension theme running through it there's a lot specifically actually with regards to um, thought uh, and how our thoughts aren't true and what I came to see is that this can kind of lead us into a dismissive suppression of our beautiful human and in my opinion much gets lost in that and it's, it's completely unintentional it's not something we do on purpose um, but we do need to just bring conscious awareness back to those darker parts of ourselves whilst also holding the ascension a path and holding the idea that we're wisdom and that we're divine and I I'll come to this later but it's almost like this co-creation between the two I will just say as well, it was quite funny because I realised that um, for such a long time, whilst I was in this ascension path, I basically just sat on my bum doing nothing. 
<laughs> so, I mean, yeah, there are benefits to staying in that path. But it didn't allow me to fully kind of dive into my power and, and create what I wanted to create. So you can see there, there's the kind of costs and benefits to walking the ascension path, as well as the costs and benefits of choosing a soulful path. Um, but one of the costs of the ascension path, really, I guess, um, was that my beautiful witchiness was beginning to feel redundant and was beginning to get lost. And that really, it left me kind of denying all the rich, messy, beautiful humanness, so all my emotions, all my kind of unique human expression, uh, and all my golden glory, really. So I'd spent much of my life being the good girl. And whilst many of my stories really were being seen as stories, so I would see that, um, oh, that's a story. The temptation would be on the ascension path to say, oh, that's a story, it doesn't matter. But but in the, in the saying, oh, it doesn't matter, it was really just pushing that story into the shadows to be ignored. Whereas the work that I do now is really about kind of seeing those um, stories and using them to liberate ourselves. So it really, the ascension path alone just turned me even more into a secret witch in that I started to suppress the gold from my stories as well as the darkness. It's like all of our stories are made up in the ascension path. So things like, for example, um, yoga, um, meditation, affirmations, um, individualized and intentional ritual, uh, spell casting, all of the rich, juicy stuff that made me me, made me my liberated witch, really just fell by the wayside uh, because I felt like I didn't need them. So piece by piece, I was kind of setting aside the pieces of me that felt like choosing life because for me it was like well the universe is in control so why would we choose life we'll just wait for the universe to provide and in some ways I have to say that kind of made me into a little bit of a victim and that might be quite triggering to hear if you're feeling like this is part of your story too um so if you are listening to this and feeling triggered then I completely understand because I felt like the word victim was horrendous like I didn't want to be a victim but actually by just waiting for the universe to provide I was just allowing life to control me um and things like desire um and all of that sort of stuff that got abandoned and whilst I was still there in the background I felt that I just had to wait really for what what my heart longed for um and really, that left me with very little majesty, very little sovereignty. So there was no real kind of co-creation between the divine and between my human soul. I was just kind of at the mercy of the divine, the universe, hoping that one day my creations would come to life. And then I found the path of soul. And don't get me wrong, in some ways I was right because we don't need some of the things that my heart longed for to be okay. But we can choose them just as intentionally committing to who we long to become offers so much more juicy joy and actually in turn peace than any ascension path. So I have made a lot of changes since I've descended. Um, some of them I never thought were possible. Um, I've really become the leader of my life. So I've reclaimed that majesty and shifted into being in my power. And, and we talk about power very egotistically often. But really, when I talk about being in my power, I talk about power from love. So this isn't your kind of egotistical power, which might be conjured up by the word power. This is very much a soft, feminine, gentle power, but real kind of leadership. So there is a difference. And I, um, I'll probably do an episode on that at some point. But yeah, it's um, so it's, it's very different. Um, and yeah, as I said, I've made some huge changes. So things like um, I had an eating had an eating disorder when I was seventeen, and I really, really disliked my body. But I've really come to now love my body and see its absolute magic. And in doing so, I've begun to honour it. So 
for so long I've had breadcrumbs about being vegan I've had vegan cookbooks which is hilarious anybody listening to this who knows me well will be laughing at that because I cannot cook for toffee I literally am terrible I have so many stories about the things that I've tried to create with food and just never never actually managed to do having said that I have actually cooked some vegan stuff so it is yeah again another big change but um but yeah I've become vegan and I'd had so many breadcrumbs about that. I've actually become vegan and gluten-free, which is hilarious because like, you can basically not eat anything <laughs> shop-bought. Um, so there's been a lot of cooking and uh, creating in the kitchen. Although I'm very lucky and my loving partner does actually create much of that for me, um, which is magic of its own, I reckon. So... <laughs> um yeah very very lucky um of course I've created it that way <laughs> but yeah so um so there's some magic uh happened and and changing my diet I have to say having had uh, an eating disorder uh was one thing I really thought that I could never do so yes real kind of majesty been going on and obviously had a lot lot of clarity on my route forward as well as obviously infusing magic into my daily life, choosing to create and design my life just as I desire. So it really is now an intentional life that I lead and it's a very joyful one, a very rich one full of all my emotions and they don't just get suppressed. So we are the masters of our lives. We're the creators of our lives. And I've always talked about that. Uh, there's a lot of people, even in the three principles, that talk about how we are powerful creators. Um, so, yeah, it's just about kind of really realising that we also have will and we can create the most magical lives that we desire. So, I guess it'd be good to talk about secret witches because secret witches are only secret because they hide and suppress parts of themselves so as i said the ascension path is quite appealing to the secret witches now often well not often always secret witches have a burning longing for more but it's secret and they also usually don't believe in their capacity to be able to create um, they doubt themselves, they lack confidence, they fear and mistrust. Um, and often they have big dreams, but feel kind of trapped in a society that they don't feel understands them. They feel a little bit outcast, they feel misfits, um, and they fear being burned at the stake who they are. We've talked about this in the first episode. Now, as you can see from the Ascension Path, if this manifests as thoughts that then become just thoughts, those kind of doubts, those fears, those sh pieces of shame that are, that are kind of usually felt, they simply get kind of pushed into the darkness. It's like, oh, well, that's just a fear. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, that's just a doubt. That doesn't matter. Oh, well, that's shame. It doesn't matter. And it kind of just gets like, oh, well, we'll just look somewhere else. Let's just ignore that. So can you see how just ignoring it pushes it further and further out of sight? Now, that means usually what then happens is that that shame, fear and doubt will just keep popping back in from time to time and we'll just keep suppressing it again. But actually, what we can do is use those fears, doubts and shame to actually kind of really see what our gifts are and see things about ourselves that make us unique and that are kind of really useful they hold really useful pieces of gold. They, they usually hold our light within them. So what's happened to a secret witch on the ascension path is really that she has basically become even more secret because now she shames herself for her desires. She shames herself for her dreams because the universe is in charge and that's not what we, that's not what we do. We don't have desires and dreams because we just need to push them to one side because we're allowed to just flow. And so that's quite an extreme example, by the way. But, but what happens is we kind of stop listening to the beautiful inbuilt guidance system of feeling because any emotion that comes up is just thought and doesn't matter. So what then happens is that we start to dissociate with any of the phys physical messengers. So that kind of the feeling senses within our body that kind of let us know as a human what we need 
uh, what we long for and all of that sort of thing. And so we, we actually kind of in a way become quite numb to life as we're kind of transcending our bodies because the goal of ascension is to transcend the body. But in doing so, we stop listening to our bodies and we become a bit numb and we don't really, we're not really in touch anymore with what is going on. And it often feels safe there because we're not really at the edge of our comfort zone anymore. We don't kind of lean into our fears we just simply are we get used to simply being um and perhaps there's less obvious anxiety because it's suppressed but there's also as we suppress all of that you often find there's kind of no joy no kind of achievement of more no feeling of aliveness um because feeling becomes redundant and so most likely the anxiety the fears all of the all of that sort of stuff is still there, but it's just hidden away, shamed and disallowed. So those kind of old wounded voices of childhood that want to be heard and set free are ultimately disallowed and kind of suppressed um, into the darkness. And I have to say, one of the things that I found most interesting about this is that takes up so much energy. Like denying who we are really does add to the burden that we experience. So yeah, it's it's so much energy involved in hiding parts of ourselves. And we can often then become almost burned out from suppressing ourselves. And yet, mostly we have either invested a lot in this uh, path, uh, whether that be in terms of finances or time and energy. So it's very tempting to keep going with it. Uh, and it also feels a lot a lot easier to ignore the parts of us that we hide because we feel shame when we look at them. That's so much easier. Kind of masking over what's ugly and unlovable and what's desired but shamed um, is so much easier but as I said it's nowhere near as rewarding as the expansion that comes from soul so illuminating our darkness and liberating it to set us free to be our full shiny gold selves so that is why your soul is secretly longing for death disruption and descent now, as I said, this kind of realisation could be pushing some buttons, so that is okay. All of that even is welcome. It's just that perhaps right now this might be challenging some of your kind of, I guess, beliefs and paradigms about how the world works. Um, so that is absolutely okay. And um, I also had this same resistance. And resistance really is just showing us where we're hitting up against our belief systems. So bring a lot of love to that that is that is my advice is that and that is my advice with anything anything that we don't want to look at is let's just absolutely shower it in love because again the more that you can welcome all of you the more that you'll be able to liberate so if this is pushing your buttons some inquiry might be able to um, help you uh, soften into this kind of understanding this way of being so uh, you may wish to pause the episode here and I'm just going to read some questions that you might want to consider um, so that you can pause for a bit of inquiry or you can keep going, it's entirely up to you. So the questions for reflection are, how far do you use your body to sense and to feel into your desires, your longings and to intentionally create magic in your life? How far has the universe provided you everything you long for so far? Or is there still more? More fulfilling relationships, more confidence, more magic and more joy to be had. What darkness and emotions have you pushed into shadow as just thoughts, never to be looked at again? And do you feel fully liberated of these so that you've expanded past them, even existing, or are they just being pushed away and dismissed every time they bubble up? Now you can use those questions to really just begin to notice for yourself how useful 
uh, the ascension path is and also um, just to kind of begin to notice how much you do use your body to sense into um, what's going on in your life um, and also a little bit more about kind of like what there is more that you are longing for so it's a really powerful inquiry that so do enjoy but yeah I'm gonna keep going with um, the importance of dissension so I would suggest that um, if you're listening to this that you have not found it so easy in the ascension path and that you maybe don't want the easy path either um, because perhaps like me, you have realised that there's something kind of unique to you and there's kind of this magic. Um, so the ascension path perhaps hasn't helped you be your wild self, it hasn't helped you liberate your power, uh, and it hasn't helped you alchemise your gifts. And you may or may not, as I said, have already walked the ascension path. You might not know anything about the path of spirituality and that's okay too um, because this is always a good place to start. And again, the, the ascension path is woven into the work that I do so that's still relevant it's just that there's a real focus on the dissension. Why? Well the main reason is that magic which I'll explain magic can only happen in a body. Now that is quite mind-blowing to me is that if we aren't in our bodies in our bodies um, and we're trying to transcend them, we cannot create magic. So in the last year, I've really seen myself descend back into my body, into my heart, into my soul. And I believe truly that the process of birth, when I gave birth to my daughter Lily last August, really offered me such a powerful, powerful portal to n knowing how miraculous our bodies are and how important it is to fully show up in them rather than transcend them. Um, because the ascension path for me was not offering any support at that time and it was because I was not in my body. So it makes no sense to me now to try and rise above our experience and to simply let myself be guided because we came here as powerful creators to create magic. We didn't come here to live as secret witches feeling trapped. We didn't come here to transcend our human experience. We came here to fully embody the magic of life as a human in a feeling body. And sometimes that feels dark and sometimes that involves death and destruction. But without that, we also can't feel the beauty, the joy, the ecstasy of life, basically. Um, so, yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense to me anymore to be to be walking that path. And the other thing about that is, and we talk a lot about um, nature in the Ascension Path, because we are basically nature... And that was one of the things I really did take from the Ascension Path was that we are the same as nature. We're just like a tree walking around with thoughts. <laughs> but even nature has seasons. So nature has um, winter, nature has spring, nature has summer and autumn. So why is it that we would want to disconnect from and silence the winter of our emotions just because it feels easier? That is all natural. And this is, this is the thing, is that the darkness, the death, the disruption is all so natural. It's all so necessary because without winter, we wouldn't be able to go into spring because it would just be one constant, like summer, for example, which just doesn't, yeah, it just that's not what happens. <laughs> and yet it would feel so much easier, but is it helpful? Um, so, but as I said, um, it's really, really important to see that without our bodies, our soul would not have anywhere to dance. And that really is the key. Like to manifest magic requires us to be human. There's nothing to transform unless we are human. So that is really an embodied knowing that from living deeply in our bodies, our souls get to dance in the creation they came here to dance as. So of course, my question is, why do we spend so long trying to evade them? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense anymore now I've, now I've seen it. So when we live in the concepts of spirituality, 
um, as I said, it's, it's kind of like very much evading and suppressing. So often, uh, I'll give you some examples. In, say, for example, the three principles, if we were feeling upset, it's just a thought. It's okay, it'll pass. If we're feeling desire, it's okay, it'll pass. If we're feeling trauma, it's okay, it'll pass. Has someone died? It's okay, it'll pass. And that last one might be kind of extreme, but it, it does highlight how there's something very uncomfortable about evading our experience and it never really fully sat right with me to fully evade our humanness and actually I um, have been a, a trained homeopath and so suppression is never something that we want to do um, because that's, that's a big kind of key teaching of, of homeopathy. Uh, our bodies fully need to express themselves for health, that is one of the main things of homeopathy and in fact uh, talking homeopathically, the very nature of suppression is us losing the gifts of our unique identity. So one of the remedies, for example, carcinosin, uh, which is the cancer miasm uh, in homeopathy, talks about um, kind of how in cancer cells just multiply, uh, but they have no unique individual expression. So that is not something we want to lose. Um, we don't want our soul's gifts to get swallowed up, hidden and shamed uh, and dismissed because um, it's just not going to be healthy for us. Uh, in my own personal opinion. Now, also, I've always, 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 prob probably if you've listened to me before, you've probably heard me quote Jeff Foster saying, feelings are there to be held, not healed. And I kind of, uh, I, I do, I love that quote. Um, I think that the point of like feelings are there to be held is really key here. And I don't know uh, about the about the healing. I think there is some healing that can be coming in now. But for me, the word healing is probably better used as the word expansion. Um, but that said, um, we can learn to hold our emotions, to feel them, to be with them, and to use them as powerful portals for transformation, as kind of powerful messengers. And... We can still learn to do this without them running the show because I just want to point out a lot of the stuff that does come up is story based. It is based on things that have been in the past that have created uh, old beliefs, outdated beliefs that don't necessarily work for who we long to become. So a big part of the work that I do is still liberating the stories. But there's a key kind of understanding here with that in that it's really, really useful or not even useful it's really critical to be able to dis discern between emotions that need to be held and healed and emotions that are coming from story and there's a way of kind of exploring that in our bodies if our if we are kind of in story we'll tend to feel quite closed quite in fear quite quite tight and tense um, if it's something that is more authentic that is there to be held and healed then it's likely we'll feel a little bit open with it so the an example of that is for example grief if we are holding grief then that needs to be held and loved um, whereas if we're maybe holding an old uh, story that needs to be liberated yes there needs to be love brought to it but there also is this understanding that actually this is story, it's not particularly useful anymore, or we'll bring so much love to it um, until it really kind of dissolves. And um, and for me, that's the real difference is like how authentic is this um, emotion? Uh, and and we go from there. Um, so yeah, I might, I might say a bit more on that later. I, I um, I'm not sure yet, but... Yeah, basically we can learn to hold our emotions, feel them and be with them and use them as these powerful portals for transformation. So where to go now? Well, I guess um, maybe talking a little bit about the fact that I was firmly convinced that I wasn't invading my humans. So when I was in the ascension path, because I still valued holding the feelings, I was basically convinced I wasn't evading my humanness and I kind of still embraced all the experience of life so I did embrace the messy destructive parts 
as well as the joyful parts um because really sydney banks who was kind of the the key figure of, of three principles he said we need not to be afraid of our human experience so for me that kind of summed up well actually it's okay for us to to experience all of our humanness but it did it, innocently and unconsciously i did still deny parts of myself and so this has kind of deepened again more recently um but now that's more conscious these parts are kind of no longer held as just thought no longer dismissed they're kind of really visible to me um and or they've dissolved i guess as i've um alchemized them into gold and so all of that all of the unlovable the unwanted the ugly the shamed the scary that hides in our shadow that's been pushed into the darkness so that it can never harm us again those pieces of us it they're harmful to ignore and suppress and in doing so they're also they're left un- unexpressed then we just kind of carry on in the essential path being reliant on the universe so what a relief <laughs> oh my goodness what a relief all the dark parts of us are welcome and they're gold after all so yeah we have to welcome all parts of ourselves we don't need to ignore them anymore what a relief and as i said there's this kind of knowing how it feels in our bodies how these emotions feel in our bodies are they fear-based um and again if if they're coming from fear we can we can still utilize that um kind of seeing of the story and still choose to focus in the direction of our desire the aim is ultimately really honing our focus because as, as secret witches we're powerful manifestors so wherever we place the focus of our attention is going to be what we get more of so the idea isn't that we kind of sit and wallow in these shadowy dark parts of ourselves the idea is that we we discern between what needs uh, holding and healing and what is story that simply needs refocusing and to be loved um, in, into liberation um, so as we get kind of more uh kind of familiar with the with the shadowy parts of ourselves i guess we then become we become more and more masterful of them so they begin to impact us less and less because we've seen them we've held them we've fully felt them but again those natural cycles of life we can sit with and fully feel so things like death um it's really important that we that we also learn to discern between story and what's natural and truthful and again, the portal to that is through our bodies. So I'm waffling on about something there um, that was just actually something I really got um, clarity on the other day. It was something I knew, but it just um, got so much more clarity on. So I, I know I've, I've mentioned that a couple of times, but it's, it is quite important and something that we, we can learn to discern. Um, so you might be thinking, well, how do I know that I'm longing for death and disruption? And by the way, you also may not even know that you are. <laughs> Probably not something you sit there and think, oh, I know, I would really like some death and disruption today and I'd really like to descend into soul. It's not really something we typically sit there and think, is it? <laughs> but what you might have is a sense of the idea that you're longing for a more magical life, a more soulful life. And some of the ways that you might even know that you're longing for that and longing for death and disruption might be that you are still feeling stuck in life even though you've done a lot of spiritual searching you might be finding that you're suppressing parts of yourself and your thoughts because they don't matter including the good stuff which also gets banished to the dark so that's things like dreams and desires that seem like they're a little bit naughty because that's uh, something that's associated with ego you might have this sense of longing to be your unique magic you might feel like you don't have a purpose you might even if you if you do listen into your body have a bit of a gnawing feeling in your body or a gut intuition that there's more to life than simply finding peace and because that's something that is very heavily focused on in the ascension path but i guess one of the other things is that you you will have likely a burning desire for more it's likely as well that if you're in a spiritual path, you will probably feel some guilt or shame 
for having any longings of this kind um, because in theory in inverted commas you shouldn't be focused in this way as a spiritual being then also uh, fear feeling fear is a big sign that you're longing for death disruption and descent <laughs> because it suggests that there's something that you long for that's scaring the hell out of you quite naturally and that's again completely understandable but it does indicate that there's more for you and as I said before, it may be even that you can't quite sense into what you've been disconnecting from and silencing, but you have a sense that your body and soul are longing to be heard. And I suspect that if you're here listening to this, it's it's applicable to you, because otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> this is As much as I say about the universe, I completely do, you know, I'm not kind of banishing the ascension path it is it is a big part of us but as i said and i'll come to this in a minute it's a co-creation so the there is this element of like the universe brings in what's in alignment for us but it's also that we have will to be able to co-create with the energy of the universe as well so um so yeah just to make that crystal clear for you and if you do have any questions on any of this by the way do feel free to reach out um i'll pop the links in the show notes so oh gosh okay let me just take a breath mm, okay so let's talk a little bit about alchemizing our darkness into magical gifts so the importance of death and disruption um, is because we need to look directly at our darkness to consciously alchemize it into our gifts. If we don't look in the darkness, we miss the opportunity to use our gifts to liberate our power. And this is because our deepest gifts are hidden in our deepest wounds. And this is very much the case with um, the work that I'm doing here. So the secret witch is because one of my deepest wounds was not shining my truth. I was very much the hidden secret, which at one point I have moved along the map to the place of liberation. And therefore I'm holding your hand as you come with me. So my greatest, deepest gift of service to you was hidden in my deepest wound. And my own wounds are feeling fear, shame, mistrust in myself. Um, so if we don't look into the darkness, if I hadn't looked into the darkness, I wouldn't be here talking to you about all of this. So that is why we need to go there. Now, as I said, it doesn't always feel good. Usually there's even much not feeling good. <laughs> but there is feeling, which is better than numbness. So again, um, the only way is through. And by that, I mean what we need to do really is to love ourselves through all of the darkness until we feel alive and our soul feels fulfilled. Um so what I've seen more recently um, is that nothing gets transformed from shadow until we look directly at it. So yeah, there's more looking at our darkness, um, our shames, our fears, and we need to consciously go there in order to liberate ourselves. And as I said, magic is quite literally happening in our body and magic itself is defined as a process of transformation and of alchemy. So real magic happens only by diving deeply into the well of our bodies and looking directly at shame, fear, all the messy, ugly stuff that we don't want to feel, all the messy stuff that we want to avoid, and fully feeling it. We don't need to just welcome it. We need to embrace it, approve of it, and integrate it. Um, so doing that is something that we obviously avoid in the path of ascension. Um, but it can only be done consciously and intentionally. and ca can only be done through our bodies, can only be done through felt experience. Without our bodies, we wouldn't be able to um, create magic because we wouldn't be here enjoying life. We wouldn't be here having this conversation. Without our bodies, there's no place for transformation. So we really do have to summon the courage to look here, um, to be better informed about our desires, which really reside deep in the depths of our bellies. Um, and from doing that, we begin to see where we where we can go next. 
we don't even look in the direction of desires on the ascension path because desires are too human and they need to be transcended and that's kind of where the shame comes in um but our, our, as i've come to see our bodies are a gift and we don't want to waste the gift of being human by trying to be spirit so i talked about this co-creation so when we find the courage to descend to look at our desires to live our unique human truth we will have begun to make the unconscious conscious and instead of leaving it just to fate or to the universe it finally becomes within our power to choose our lives and this is the work that I am in the work of (laughs) helping people (laughs) with so um yeah it's it's pretty powerful stuff as I said we're powerful manifestors and it's really this kind of constant dance between soul and spirit so it is this co-creation so it isn't just us doing it it becomes this co-creation between the two paths of ascension and dissension between spirit and soul between the universe's weaving of its golden thread through us and our own personal will And again, as I said, I'm not saying that the ascension journey is wasted because there's only really ever a deeper expansion. So a deeper kind of sinking into who we are and all that we are. So what happens is we get to beautifully, magically and richly co-create our lives using both the wisdom of thought and embodiment or our soul's will in a gorgeous co-creation with universal or divine will or whatever you want to call it. So all of the ascension path and the descension path are beautifully co-creating in glorious co-creation with each other. And we are basically a unique human individual expression of that wisdom. For me, that really often gets missed and denied in any discussion about personal thought. And it might be even just a misinterpretation. But my understanding has deepened about this kind of co-creation so as we begin to co-create life basically becomes a lot juicier because we start to integrate the hidden beautiful witchiness we have and we do remember and celebrate and find the gold in the secret parts of ourselves so our secret witch in all her glory is a liberated witch and we create magical lives from there So we begin to see that we're not just at the mercy of our wisdom. We create our lives by creating an intentional container for wisdom to weave through our humanness, if you like. So this is a container within which we choose our focus consciously, really from doing the work to to clean our our energetic, um, so to to dive into our shadow and see it for what it is, um, and we've got that kind of clean energetic of liberation. So the the key thing to know is, is that we are power. And I talked about this a lot again in the first episode, um, but it's really important just to touch on that because it's so important to know because the, the power is in our unique individual expression. So what most powerful women are misunderstanding as they walk around creating their lives is is just that, that they're creating their lives. So you are creating your life. It's not just down to the universe. There is this personal will, as I mentioned. So it appears from the ascension lens that we're at the mercy of the universe, but we are the powerful creators. So the, the universe weaves its magic as our unique expression. So If your life is lacking magic and soul, feeling quite mundane, it's because you are unconsciously creating it that way. And don't get me wrong, it's totally understandable too, because it's due to a simple, easy misunderstanding from society that we're not taught how we're already innately powerful creators. It can also be easily missed in an ascension path because of the misunderstanding that leads to people think we have to transcend and suppress the human experience. But we are powerful magical manifestors with glorious bodies (laughs) which send us signals to tell us where to go next. And from that safe holding ground, from knowing that, we begin to lean into and sense how to create what we truly desire. Now, What's often missed as well is that we are creating lives all the time. But so far, if we've been walking the ascension path, we've just been creating life based on the misunderstanding that we're not the creators. 
So we're in the misunderstanding that we're not in our bodies, that we're totally reliant on the universe to, to work its magic. And we can really miss that we are in powerful co-creation with our soul and we have the will to create our lives as richly as we desire. So that is what we've been creating. If we've been walking around seeing the ascension path as our truth, we've been creating more of that. And as I said, the magic is held in our bodies. So whilst we've been busily evading those, um, really, it's, it's we need to come back and embody ourselves. So part of my own Live Your Wild Alchemy journey for clients is really a whole lot of work on soul embodiment. And it's so important to reconnect with our bodies and begin to listen to them. Because if we do that and listen to, to our inner signals, that is what leads the way. Again, we, don't, we often don't want to do that because of the shame, fear and mistrust. But as we begin to lean into those things and the hidden parts of ourselves, we begin to harness our magical power to manifest our wild alchemy. And it's never too late. We get to choose at any point from our rewilded bodies, letting them lead the way into our magical lives. Now, by welcoming all the darkness and loving it into liberation, we get to be free of it. So for example, a huge part of my own darkness was my own struggle with my personal power. So I've looked into that, felt the shame, the mistrust, the fear around it all. I've done inner child work. I've created death to old ways of being with my personal power, which that kind of work would just be seen as like completely pointless in an ascension path. Um, and for a time I thought it was. But now I've I've done the work, I have invoked and embodied my liberated witch and uh, I've reclaimed my majesty. And so now it's alchemized into gold in this, in that this dark piece of me, which has been rebirthed um, as a liberated witch, is my gift to others along the same journey. So I already mentioned that uh, earlier as an example, but this, this was like really a strong example of how my deepest wound has become my most golden soul gift. Now, the thing that is often the first and biggest barrier to people is this choice, because we have to choose the descent. We have to choose into path of, of, of death and destruction in order to gain that liberation and create that liberation for ourselves. So we can't just sit here waiting for the universe to provide to us. We have to use our soul will and follow the breadcrumbs that appear. And obviously that takes courage. It takes courage to descend, especially if we've been deeply embedded into the path of ascension. So I really do advocate for my, for my clients to choose to look in the direction of what they desire. Now, as I mentioned a bit earlier, focus and intention and really honing our focus are, after all, the keys to magic. But the only way really to be able to focus our attention and, uh, and kind of really get clear and continuously look in the direction of our magic is to first consistently get to a place of liberation so that none of our shadow gets in the way. Because if we're pushing it away constantly, it's always coming back to bite us in the bum. And we push it away again and it comes back to bite us in the bum. And we push it away again and it comes back. So it's not ever really fully integrated in an ascension path. When we walk this path, that is what we're in the work of doing. The descent, the death, the disruption is all about integrating all of the stuff that we hide in shame and, and liberating it. So it means holding our emotions and tending them. Um, it means being willing to die and be reborn and not as Muji describes it. It means um, basically cons consciously liberating all of the shadow and choosing our focus. Now, why? Because as I said, to transcend the body takes away from our magic. Magic can only be created in a body. The body is here for your pleasure. The body is here to be delighted in. And without death, disruption and descent, you will not be able to feel the pure joy available from being at home in your body. Yes, Death will feel messy, 
but liberation will feel alive and you won't get that from just walking the path of ascension on its own. We have to shine a light into our darkness so that we can become free from it. So we have to hold the polarity of whatever suffering we find ourselves in until it no longer exists. And then we can stand in the clean, loving energy of our soul, being fully ready to really hone our focus on becoming a unique, beautiful radiance that we long to be. We don't get there by ignoring our pain. We get there by alchemizing the darkness into gold. So if you are courageous enough to look there, you might well begin to feel the call from uh, from listening to this. Um, it might feel like a stirring of aliveness somewhere in your body if you stop suppressing it and listening in. And if that is you, then it's likely that soul is the next breadcrumb along your path. And as I said, and as I always say, it's not for everyone. But if you are feeling ready to choose your life more intentionally, to harness your will, to embrace all of your feeling senses and to begin to co-create a magical life on your terms, then this path may be for you. And uh, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. It was something that I really wanted to share and uh, if you do want to work deeper, then I currently have some spaces to work with me a little bit more intimately in my safe alchemical altar space so that you can liberate the juicy transformational darkness of your secret witch and show up fully as your truest, unsuppressed, unedited, intentionally chosen magical majesty. Wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> So um, yeah, mate, well, it sounds good to me. I'm very excited. <laughs> if it doesn't sound good, potentially it's fear. There's a lot of fear in the way and we're all good there. That's fine. And keep listening <laughs> um, because I've been there. I really do understand. So uh, yeah, I will just leave you with this. Um, the following questions are really good reflection. Uh, for you on this path and um, as I said it's not a path for everyone but you'll know it's for you but the question really is who do you desire to become and will you choose to liberate your darkness lots of love um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I will catch you very soon Mmm, I adored chatting about this dark topic. I hope you enjoyed listening. Let me know what you thought. And in the meantime, here are my key takeaways. On the ascension path, there is so much shame about having desires, but a life of soul requires us to use our will to listen into desire and honour our desires to co-create our lives. We are in a constant dance between soul and spirit. Death, disruption and descent are the only route to soul. We must create death to old ways of being in order to birth new ones. The only way is through. We have to love ourselves through the darkness until we are liberated and have alchemized our darkness into gold. But we must consciously choose to look into our darkness for this and love and approve of it. In doing this, we free ourselves from our shadow. We discern what is useful to alchemize into gold and to liberate ourselves. Our feelings are powerful messengers. By sensing into our bodies, we can discern which feelings to lovingly hold and process, for example, grief, versus those less helpful, fear-based stories which we want to dissolve and then refocus our attention in the direction we wish to create in. Without our bodies, magic cannot happen. It is a process of transformation which is only possible in our bodies. This is the space for our soul to dance. What most powerful women are unconsciously misunderstanding is that we are always creating our lives. It's not just down to the universe, we all have personal will. We can do the work to clean our energetic by diving into our shadow and then we can choose our focus to create a magical life. This is misunderstood by both society and the ascension path. We have to choose the dissension path of death and destruction to create our lives, and that takes courage. So it can seem often a scarier path than the ascension path, but its benefits of being fully alive in our own radiance, wild power and majesty, living our truth, are so worth the costs. 
We won't get that from Ascension alone. If you'd like to get the show notes and links for everything we've chatted about in this episode, head to www.secretwitch.co.uk. If you know a secret witch who would love this episode, please share with them to help them liberate themselves. And so you don't miss out on next week's episode, head to your podcast app of choice and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.